have seen that communication is exchange of information in a mood of mutuality. There is a sender and a receiver and there is some information or message that is being exchanged. There could be various types of communication. It could be one way or two way. It could be verbal or non-verbal. It could involve written modes such as letters or it could involve oral or spoken formats like a dialogue or a speech. It could also involve body language and gestures or various other non-verbal cues like smells and touch. So we have seen that communication involves all these processes. We will now look at some of the attempts made to build a model of how this entire process happens. A model is a representation of a process. As we have seen, various researchers tried to define and understand how communication happens. Communication also involves noise or interference. So, the various elements in a communication process could include a sender, a message, a channel, a receiver, encoding, decoding and noise. There is another important element to the communication process. This is feedback. Any movement, gesture or information given out by the receiver back to the source or to the sender is feedback saying or confirming that communication has taken place. Feedback could be immediate, delayed or sometimes as in one-way communication take multiple forms or never happen at all in certain instances. Depending on the process of communication, the importance of feedback in the process could vary. Let us look at the process of communication and try to understand it with an example. Imagine two friends. One is asking the other a simple single statement give me your notebook. So, the person who realizes that he or she needs something that has happened in class and puts it into words by saying, give me your notebook becomes the sender. The second person to whom this statement is addressed becomes the receiver. What is the message? The message is, give me your notebook. The channel in this case being a direct one-to-one -one conversation is the statement made in a direct mode. This could sometimes take other forms as in, imagine a class that is going on and a small written note pass to a friend which says please give me your notebook or another instance where a friend calls up another and says please get your notebook tomorrow I need it. In such cases the message is being delivered through various modes or various channels. For the past 50 to 70 years, there has been a lot of information and a lot of research happening on how 
this communication process actually takes place. When you say, give me your notebook, probably your friend understands it as, give me your English notebook. Whereas, you meant, give me your maths notebook. So, what you say need not necessarily be understood or interpreted in exactly the same way. In fact, we see this happening very often in our day-to-day -day lives. We say something, we are trying to convey an idea, but it is understood in a slightly different fashion. This is because of the noise or interference in the process. So, what do we want to say and what is understood? This entire process has been modeled by different people in an attempt to understand how communication happens. Model is a representation of a process and over the years there have been several models of communication. Let us look at some of the more influential models of communication. To begin with, in the early days, Aristotle was a very vocal speaker who had swayed public opinion on a multitude of subjects. Aristotle's model of communication was based on a public speaker's address to a gathering. Apart from this, the modern age, today's communication models include influential people like Harold Raswell, Shannon and Weaver model, the SRAM model and Berler's model of communication. Aristotle was one of the earliest proponents of a model of communication. His model is considered to be the classic model of communication. Back in those days, the art of public speaking and rhetoric was held in high esteem. So, Aristotle gave a model which was based on a public speaker or an orator addressing a large gathering. So, Aristotle's classical model was in fact a depiction of a one-way communication process. It was a one-way model where there is one speaker with a message addressing a large gathering who formed the receivers of the message. Harold Laswell's model formed the first stepping stone to communications research. Laswell, back in 1948, made a very popular statement that summed up his approach at looking at the communication process. He was interested in representing the entire communication process in a single sentence which says who says what to whom in what channel and with what effect. Laswell was a pioneer in building a model of the communication process because his single statement included who that is the sender says what which is the message to whom obviously the receiver in what channel the mode or the channel with what effect that is the response to the communication which involves feedback this single simple sentence encompassed the entire communication process that was modeled by Harold Laswell. So, Laswell's model focused on verbal communication. 
when you have two friends talking to each other, when I say, please give me your book, I am the sender, give me your book is the message, I am saying this to you and I am addressing it through a telephone or directly and with what effect? The response is either you say, no, I cannot give it to you, I have to study or you say, of course, take it, you can return it once you are done. So that is the effect of the communication process. Laswell's model was a simple and a very effective way of putting the entire communication process in a single sentence. Though Laswell's work preceded Shannon and Weaver, the Shannon and Weaver model is far more popular and influential. In fact, Shannon and Weaver are considered to be the fathers of research in communication. The Shannon and Weaver model introduced the concept of noise into the model of communication. In fact, this is a very important addition to the understanding of communication process. The Shannon and Weaver model starts with the sender, has all the other elements like the channel, the message, the receiver. Additionally, there is what is called an encoding which is the process of actually putting your thoughts or ideas into a particular format. When you want a book, you could either say, please give me a book or you could write it and pass it across or you could simply gesture to your friend across the class saying, please pass your book. No words involved. So this process of putting your thought, I need a book and I am going to ask Smita for the book. These thoughts, when they are put into action in multiple ways, then there is a process of encoding happening. So the sender encodes and sends a message across through a channel and the receiver at their end, the receivers decode this message. So what does decoding involve? Decoding involves seeing something, it could be a written sentence, it could be a set of sounds in the form of a message, it could be a set of gestures. Listening to that or seeing that and understanding the requirement of the sender and subsequently acting upon it is the essence of the decoding that happens. Apart from this, at every stage, either during encoding or when the message is moving through the channel or when there is a decoding happening, there could be some interference. This interference is noise. So when your friend gestures, I need your book, you might understand that as I need your English book because this request is sent during the English class or you could understand it as I need your maths book because your friend has missed the preceding maths class. So your knowledge is now becoming the interference. Your knowledge of your friend's absence is creating a noise in this process. You respond by asking which book? This is the feedback that goes back to the sender, communicating to the sender that yes, I have received and understood your message. Shannon and Weaver were engineers 
who were involved in trying to design a model for communication technology. They were working with signals and pulses and they were working for the telecommunication industry in the early days when telephones and telephone communication was being developed. So their work, their model was highly influential, highly popular and widely accepted. Even today, the Shannon and Weaver model is considered to be the one all-encompassing model that talks about all the elements involved in the communication process. The Shannon and Weaver model was a linear one which began with the sender and ended with the receiver. The concept of feedback, which is a very important one, was added by another communications researcher called Schramm. Schramm in 1954 came up with a model that was essentially an improvement or an addition to the Shannon and Weaver model. Schramm came up with the notion of feedback, with the notion of communication being a continuous process and a two-way process. Communication is reciprocal, so communication actually is complete when feedback is also taken into account when developing a model of communication. This was what Schramm believed. So his model included feedback. Not only did it include feedback, he also suggested that since communication is two-way, since it is reciprocal, encoding and decoding happen both at the receiver's end and at the sender's end. So the SRAM model had encoding, decoding at the sender's end, encoding and decoding at the receiver's end, a message, a channel with noise and a feedback to complete the loop of communication. So far, we have seen that Aristotle began with the concept of what a model of communication should look like. We have also looked at Harold Laswell's interpretation of communication process, the Shannon and Weaver model and the SRAM model which was essentially an improvement of Shannon and Weaver's work. Berlow in 1960 came up with another model. The basic process of communication remains the same. The elements remain the same. However, what needs to be emphasized upon in this entire process, who is important or what is important? Is it the sender? Is it the receiver? What defines effective communication? Is it the channel or the message? These are various questions that researchers were trying to address. Berlow, in his simple yet highly effective model, emphasizes on the importance of the message. Berlow's model is popularly known as the SMC our model. S source, M message, C channel and R receiver. So there is a source, there is a message, there is a channel, there is a receiver. All the elements, the basic elements. So how is Berlow's model different? The source, message, channel and receiver all have various elements 
attributes and characteristics. Berlow explained and elucidated on each of these. The source and the receiver in a communication model refer to the people who send or receive information through a communication process. So, this involves communication skills obviously, it also involves their attitudes, their perceptions, their knowledge of whatever is being said. The culture, cultural norms and the social system. For example, when an Indian says, let us see, it is probably a polite way of saying, I will not be able to do your work. But instead of refusing outright, we might say, let us see, let us see if I can do something. But this may be construed as a message meaning, I will try to do something for an American. So, the cultural norms and the social system are also important elements. Berlow's model highlighted each of these factors. Apart from the sender and receiver, we have the channel, the C part of the model. The channel could target at any one of the five senses. So, the channel could target hearing, seeing, smelling, touching or even tasting. Any of the five senses could act as the recipients of the channel of communication. Coming to the most important part of the communication process, the message has various elements like content, code, structure and treatment. Let us take an example. When your teacher asks you, why are you late? Now the same thing can be said in multiple ways. When the emphasis is on why, as in why are you late? The idea behind it is, the teacher is asking you the reason for your tardy appearance. But let us suppose the question is asked differently. Why are you late? Then what does it imply? The emphasis here is on you, which means there are many people who are late. What is the reason for you as an individual, as a person to be late? So the emphasis is not on the reason here, but on you as a person. The third way in which the same question could be asked is, why are you late? The emphasis on late conveying, what is it that has kept you away from the class? Why couldn't you be punctual? Why couldn't you come on time? So the focus is on your late arrival. It is not on you. It is not on the reason. The focus is on the tardy behavior. So, the same message, the same content could have various treatments. Berlow's model emphasized on the message. It was an important model because both the source and the receiver received equal importance. So, various formats in which message can be sent various ways in which a receiver could receive it are of equal importance and emphasis is on the message, the various elements that go into message and because the elements are defined, we are also including the possibility of noise or interference or distortion happening because of various elements that are included in this process. Both encoding and decoding involving the psychological factors at the sender's end and receiver's end are also taken care of in Berlow's model. 
So, Berlow's model which started out basically as a theory was also highly appreciated by the research community. To sum up, if we look at what Aristotle did right up to what Berlow was trying to do, Aristotle started with a one-way model. There is a speaker, a message that is communicated to a group. Then we had Laswell who tried to look at all the elements in the communication process, who says what, to whom, in what channel, with what effect. And then we moved on to Shannon and Weaver's work which not only included all these elements but also said that there could be interference or noise in the model that depicts communication. Schramm said that communication is a two-way process and so a representation of communication should also include feedback. And moving on to Berlow, Berlow's focus was on giving equal importance to the source and the receiver along with the channel and emphasis on message. So each of the models were complementary and built on the starting or the basic model that Aristotle used to describe the process of rhetoric.